Welcome into the channel everyone. Today we're going to be doing some gas metal arc welding on aluminum. And if you've had any trouble when it comes to getting all this black soot and pepper all in the welds, well this video right here, it's for you. Now before you dive into a whole lot of your machine settings, you really got to pick what filler metal and what base metal you're using. I picked up some 6061, some flat bar. That's what we're going to use as far as our coupons today. And I have two filler metals, a 4043 and a 5356. These are really common filler metals to use on a lot of different alloys of aluminum. There are going to be some different situations where they're not going to work for you and they're not going to weld great on that material. And some filler metals just don't get as shiny as others. I would say for general purpose stuff, uh, like the 6061 or if you're doing a typical repair, start there. Start at a 5356 or a 4043 or maybe a 4943. You just got to do your research and try to find what's best for you. Anyway, enough rambling. We got to talk a little bit about the machine you have in front of you. This is the Cyclone 263 PI. We'll get off the argon mixes and this 100% CO2 and you can look at Synergic Pulse. Pulse MIG is around to really help improve the weldability of say aluminum. So we'll get onto that a little bit later and see if that helps with our weld cleanliness at all. Even here in the pre sets it'll even say what wire are you using 55 54 maybe we're using 53 56 or 40 47 40 43 and really all that comes down to is those are a little bit different and they could run a little bit different if we go over into say our aluminum settings we have your typical voltage and amperage settings for everything i've done some practice coupons on this quarter inch stuff this seems to work really well you know, might think that that might be a little bit too hot compared to say carbon steel with 035 wire or that's a lot more wire i think aluminum needs a little bit more wire because it melts a lot faster so you're going to see higher inches per minute or amperage when it comes to pushing some thinner wire if you go up in wire diameter obviously this number is going to go down this number might even go up depends on what you're running. So we've got our machine settings today. We're gonna to go over a couple different options and why your consistency in your weld may not be good, which could lead to why your welds aren't as clean. And that really starts in here at the wire feeder. Now this may or may not be news to you, but you can run a traditional MIG setup. So I've got my Abacor Benzel Abbey MIG gun. This is the same MIG gun that I use for all my MIG welding. It even has the steel liner in it. Now traditionally you're going to want to swap out a few things, swapping the liner to a Teflon liner and swapping out the rollers to U-groove rollers instead of V-groove rollers or knurled rollers. We do have the U-groove rollers. Those are supposed to be more shaped to the wire to prevent any type of pinching compared to like a V-groove or smushing that softer aluminum wire. And we have about a 15 foot lead on this Abacor gun. That poses a problem when it comes to selecting a wire. 5356 wire, it's got a little bit of a higher tensile strength than say the 4043. So a lot of people would recommend using a 5356 type wire in order to run a longer distance without having any hiccups this setup isn't like perfect but it will get by if you're doing some little here's and there's now you'll notice that this machine won't actually fit this spool right here they make these adapters or you could just make one yourself i've got a little piece of two inch schedule 10 stainless a grinder wrench and a bolt and all we're going to do is just put that filler metal on there like so and let it dangle a little bit and then we'll put that spacer on there we should be square business as far as running this wire through what i'm going to do first is run the 5356 we're going to make a weld see what it looks like i'm going to swap out the wire to a 4043 running the same setup again this is like a regular mig setup the issues here is when this wire say isn't perfectly tensioned right in here so it could over spool here we could have some issues in this section from inconsistent feeding from being in that steel liner. That steel liner is steel, so that aluminum's rubbing it could give you some cross contaminations. There's a lot of reasons why you shouldn't do it this way, but we're gonna do it anyway, just to see what happens. We've got that wire running right into the gun a little bit. Go ahead and hit our automatic feed. That's gonna run on here. We got the gun running as straight as possible. You don't want any loops or anything. This isn't an ideal setup for aluminum MIG. So to prevent any binding from happening in here, we wanna make sure this tension isn't too tight, but tight enough to pull. And then we wanna make sure that our lead and line stays as straight with no loops in it as possible to prevent any type of hiccups because as soon as you get one hiccup, this typically starts having some issues. We've got the machine set right now to 21.5 on the volts, about 450 on our inches per minute. Again, this is just your regular torch. Whoa, 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 whoa. I turned the easy feed off. That thing hit overtime. We're outside of the torch now, so now we can get suited up and make this first weld. We're gonna put our PPE on. Aluminum MIG is a nasty process. So we're gonna run a respirator. I've got my prepped 6061. We're gonna just run some basic T-joints, making one weld on each side. I'm not gonna weld one side and then the other because there's a lot of preheat from the previous weld. So you're gonna get a different result. After that, we're going to switch spools to a 4043 and see how that rolls. Psst, psst. 
Okay, now we can make our first weld. I'm going to keep that one off to the side. See how much, many beads we can weld before this machine starts to bind up. We kind of just made a mess of things. I'm going to try to let this coupon cool off. We're going to wait. While I wait, I'm going to switch this over to 4043 and see if we have any different results. So we were able to run that wire on just a regular MIG setup. And I did turn my volts up to 23.5 and close to 500 with swap wires, see if anything's different. All the wire got fed through, honestly, pretty easy. I was surprised. I thought I was going to have a hang up. Let's make a quick weld and check them out. This sounds way different. That definitely seemed to weld a lot easier. Now taking a look at the weld, remember we didn't change anything. I did adjust the volts and the wire feed a little bit. At the end of the day, we got a ton of crap all over our weld. Just seemed to, to always be there unless I had a better straight on angle, less of a push, but more of a straight on. Having the right argon flow, it just seemed like super crisp. I know that that has a higher strength, that wire does. And on some of the pros to the 4043 is the fact that the weldability is a little bit easier. And it looks like we got a much prettier looking weld. Looks like we've got a little bit of overheating into the crater there at the end, but it almost doesn't need a brush. And it looks a lot better in my opinion. It's tied in a little bit, especially right in the center there. Got a little bit of cold lap right at the beginning. That's with your just traditional MIG. I'd like to see this same weld being made with our spool gun. So we're gonna do the same thing now and just swap over R5356 to a spool gun, make a weld, let that coupon cool off and do the other side to compare. Now the idea of the spool gun is to take that long amount of line that you would typically see that aluminum wire have to go through and short it up to a really short distance. So you can run a variety of wires, no matter if they're more rigid or not. You could have other options like push pull guns where the actual wire is being pulled from the gun and pushed from the feeder. Spool gun being one of the OGs, we're gonna see if it's any different than the normal MIG setup compared to the spool gun using the same technique, pointing into our coupon and just trying to keep a push angle on it. I was told with 5356, you might need a little bit more voltage compared to 4043, as well as a straighter on angle. So I'm gonna say it's gonna probably end up being close to the same results as the MIG gun. I'd say that was a lot smoother. And we got a lot less soot. Now I don't know if that's because the nozzle size is a little bit wider. That welded a whole heck of a lot better. Let's switch this over to 4043 and let that cool off and do the other side. Just comparing right off the bat from the spool gun welds, this is our 4043 weld. And then this is our 4043 weld with our normal MIG gun. Comparatively speaking, they'll both get the job done. We did add a little bit of a touch up here at the end to prevent that cratering from happening. It seemed like we had a better start with the spool gun right here than we did with the MIG gun. And I just think it's just having a harder time to push it through that 15 foot of line. You could probably get by with even a shorter MIG gun, maybe like a six foot whip instead of the 15 and maybe be a little bit better. But I think the spool gun's really showing some honest honest results there even with the 5356 we have a less shinier weld that is the biggest thing that i wanted you all to take away from this depending on the filler metal you're using maybe why you're not getting the result that you were looking for in the first place however a 5356 is a more rigid wire and it is structurally stronger than 4043 but the weldability of it might be just a little bit tougher it looks like we got a really solid weld though with the 5356 over here with the spool gun definitely looks a lot better than the one we did with the mig gun that brings us to our next topic Topic, which is shielding gas. Now for traditional steel, carbon steel MIG welding, we would use 7525 gas. So if you think you're the welder that can just use 7525 gas, this is what that weld would look like. 
Now when it comes to MIG welding aluminum, TIG welding aluminum, you're going to want to use 100% argon. Maybe just a sprinkle of helium if you're working on some thicker stuffs. That's what I got behind me is 100% argon gas. This is the Arcal Prime. It's one of those quick fix bottles right here where you can hook it up easy, you can turn it on easy, and you can set your pressures super easy, right? No regulator to fiddle with. The flow rate's going to vary, but for now this is what a weld would look like if you completely turn this gas off. absolutely horrible let's go ahead and actually crank this thing on but set our flow rate to something maybe lower like i don't know under 20 which might be something we would tig weld with so maybe you're a tig welder that tig welds aluminum and you're like i don't need that much argon this is what a lower flow like under 20 would look like yeah not so good it almost looks like we didn't have any gas to begin with so we know we need to be cranking that sucker up. Now we can have about anywhere from 35 to 40 CFH depending on the wire type. I would say just the more the merrier. If you do start getting a little bit of spotting because you're too high, that could happen too. So try to stay somewhere in the range where it's recommended. This is what that weld should look like. Now that we know what a good weld looks like with the right type of flow, if you have any leaks, whether there's a leak on the fitting right here, or you got a leak on the machine somewhere in the solenoid, maybe the plug on the back of your spool gun is missing. Don't ask me how I know, but I do know that that is a thing. You'll have gas coming out in different directions and you're gonna have a leak somewhere and that's gonna give you a really nasty weld just the same. So make sure that you have the best gas quality that you can get, no leaks with the right flow rate. I think we have some obvious results here. This is the weld with no gas. I don't think we have any fusion. Matter of fact, all these BBs are coming off and then we have the wrong shielding gas. We actually, I saw it puddling up, but this is all kinds of crunchy and nasty. I'm not sure what that CO2 will do to an aluminum weld. If you know what that does to an aluminum weld, let us know down in the comments. And then of course we have our 100% argon right here, which looks a little bit better, but we've got so much of this black spotting, what I call peppering in the weld. And then of course this big nasty sooted part. This material wasn't super clean, but good golly, that's still a pretty nasty weld. If you weren't thinking anything of it, you might just think that was normal. But when you get the right flow rate on there, we see we've got a much cleaner weld. There's proper etching around it, proper cleaning being done around the weld. And we've got a nice shiny, same size bead. Now, even if you do have say, a gas leak somewhere, you're gonna have some other results, maybe closer to these. This is when I had some leak in the line somewhere and we were getting a lot of that blacker soot on the bead the bead profiles weren't looking right i couldn't tell you what was happening until i found the leak and then it was back to golden you just can't mess around when it comes to shielding gas on this process a breeze coming through you're freaking cooked, dude. Now we know the gas coverage is super duper, de duper important. We want to take a look at the next two things we're going to talk about, which is going to be prep and travel angle. With the gas, super important, right? We want that gas to be in front of us, not behind us. So a push angle is going to be pretty much recommended at all times. So we're going to be trying to push that at all times. If you drag it, that argon's not going to be in front of you, and you're going to see that you're going to get a much sootier weld. So we're going to do that. Not only that, but we've got a couple coupons here that are not prepped. They got some heavier oxides, even a little bit of rust on them. We're going to see if that does anything to the cloniness. We're going to push and pull both coupons and take a look at them. All right, we're going to let this one cool so we don't get too much different results. This is going to be pushing the dirty coupon. like I got heavier spatter on that one. We're gonna let these coupons cool off and then we're gonna do the drag. Ooh. All right, let's look at these things. 
Now taking a closer look at these two welds, this is our cleaned and prepped one and this was the unprepped version. I would say if you take a really good close look at it, you can see some schmutz, definitely some peppering in there, a little bit more spatter involved. I would imagine it had a little bit more of a harder time breaking through the oxide considering we did that already with the brush on this one. That's all we did was run a brush and some acetone across this plate. These were the same. We got a lot cleaner of a weld. Now, if you go ahead and flip these old dogs over, you can see those are our push angles. This is our drag angles. So if you're getting a really sooty weld and you feel like you've got everything in your power set up properly, and it looks something similar to this, you probably need to fix your angle. Now, I know that's not always going to be ideal for you because you're going to be working around something. You're going to be doing your best to hold a push angle, but you're going to end up turning and dragging. I wouldn't say that's the end of the world. It's just going to give you that much sootier weld. Now the weld profile you'll see is a little bit higher compared to say the other one. It's not as laid flat. It's more of a convex weld. I don't know if like structurally what's different in there. Not super familiar with the aluminum MIG process. So I don't know what difference it's gonna make as far as a push or a drag compared to steel. Now I think that's about all the coupons that I've got. I've got a bunch of scrap ones of trying to figure this thing out over here. I wanna run some pulse real quick just to compare since the machine does have synergic pulse and that is a big benefit to pulse is running it on MIG. So let's go set the machine. This is what we've been running at so far today, 22 volts and 372. If you wanna look at these settings right here, this worked pretty good for some quarter inch plate. Now all we're gonna do is just bump one over to the synergic pulse. I know about what we were running amperage wise, and that's about 150 is what we're gonna to wanna to try to run. Might could go a little bit five up, five down on the amperage. I'm gonna set my arc trim to like, I don't know, somewhere in the positives. I wanna kind of have that a longer arc length on it. I'm gonna not really touch the inductance much. We have 035 and our aluminum wire type is actually 4043 right now. And I tried it on 4043. I don't know if you can see these, but this was what I was getting and I couldn't tell you why. So I called them and I said, hey, something's going on. And they said, oh, we, we fixed that issue with this machine. That works if you have it on 4043. But if I put this on 5356, I find out that it works pretty all right. So we're just gonna keep it on that. See if I can get a better looking bead than that mess before. That might have been a little hot. That looks good. That 150 was a little toasty, but that's pretty slick right there. That's it for today's episode, everyone. I hope you took some value out of it. I'm not a big aluminum MIG person myself. I think now that I have a better understanding of it, I might be doing a little bit more of this and some projects coming up. If you wanna see all the stuff that we used in the video today, like the Everlast Cyclone 263 PI, to the Arcal Prime Gas, all the way to the Radner Wire we were using, even the Benzel Guns, check them out in the links down below. We'll see you guys on the next weld.